So it seems like at each debate, Tulsi Gabbard kind of sets her sights on one particular candidate. At first, it was Kamala Harris, and she basically gave Kamala's campaign a death blow. She then tried to target Elizabeth Warren at the last debate. It didn't necessarily land, but she got in a pretty solid shot at Pete Buttigieg. Um, and I think this one's going to hurt him a little bit. Take a look. But I want to get back to Pete Buttigieg and his comment about experience. Uh, I, Pete, you'll agree that uh, the service that we both have provided to our country as veterans by itself does not qualify us to serve as commander in chief. I think the most recent example of your inexperience in national security and foreign policy came from your recent careless statement about how you as president be willing to send our troops to Mexico to fight the cartels. As commander in chief, leader of our armed forces, I bring extensive experience serving for seven years in Congress on the Foreign Affairs Committee, on the Armed Services Committee, on the Homeland Security Committee, meeting with leaders of, of uh, countries around the world, working with military commanders of different commands, uh, dealing with high-level national security briefings, understanding what's necessary, the preparation that I've gotten to walk in on day one to serve as Commander-in-Chief. Congresswoman, thank so you. I've Mr. Merrill, I'll allow you to, to respond. I know that it's par for the course in Washington to take remarks mm -hmm. out of context, but that is outlandish even by the standards of today's politics. Are, are you saying that you didn't say that? I was talking about U.S.-Mexico cooperation. We've been doing security cooperation with Mexico for years with law enforcement cooperation and a military relationship that could continue to be developed with training relationships, for example. Do you seriously think anybody on this stage is proposing invading Mexico? That, that's not I'm what talking I said. That's not what I said. Up, I'm that's talking about what building up alliances. <laughs> and if your question is about experience, let's also talk about judgment. One of the foreign leaders you mentioned meeting was Bashar al-Assad. I have, in my experience, such as it is, whether you think it counts or not, since it wasn't accumulated in Washington, enough judgment that I would not have sat down with a murderous dictator like that. Congresswoman Gabbard, let me allow you to respond. Thank you. You were asked directly whether you would send our troops to Mexico to fight cartels, and your answer was yes. The fact checkers can check this out. No. But your point about judgment is absolutely correct. Our commander in chief does need to have good judgment. And what you've just pointed out is that you would lack the courage to meet with both adversaries and friends to ensure the peace and national security of our nation. I take the example of those leaders who have come before us, leaders like JFK, who met with Khrushchev, like Roosevelt, who met with Stalin, like, Donald like Trump Reagan, who met. With Kim. Who met like Reagan, who met and worked with Gorbachev. These issues of national security are incredibly important. I will meet with and do what is necessary to make sure that no more of our brothers and sisters in uniform are needlessly sent into harm's way fighting regime change wars that undermine our national security. I'll bring real leadership and experience to the White House. So that was certainly one of the highlights of the debate. Um, it's one of the instances of you know, kind of a back and forth that really stood out to me. Um, and I really will give Tulsi Gabbard credit. I've been critical of her in the past, but she deserves credit because if you are attending this debate, it behooves you to attack the person who is now largely viewed as the new front runner, at least in uh, Iowa, right? Because if you're a front runner, you have to prove that you are worthy of that position and you have to defend your front runner status. But for whatever reason, People didn't want to attack Pete Buttigieg. Like Kamala Harris was handed a golden opportunity to attack Pete Buttigieg for not reaching out to black voters enough, and she backed away. Like there were numerous instances where Pete Buttigieg could have been attacked, and people chose not to go after him. Now, Amy Klobuchar, to her credit, kind of went after him with regard to inexperience, but you know, she, she didn't really target him in the way that Tulsi Gabbard did. So everyone else on the stage should really thank Tulsi Gabbard for doing their dirty work for them because they should have really focused on Pete Buttigieg. Um, so it was important to call him out because this is someone who absolutely is a fraud who needs to be called out. So I give her credit for that. That being said, do I believe this was as effective as her attack on Kamala Harris? 
No, I think that this is definitely going to hurt him a little bit. I don't know that it will have the same impact that her criticism of Kamala Harris had. Now, I'll tell you why that's the case. So when she criticized Kamala Harris, she threw a bunch of stuff at Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris couldn't have possibly responded to everything, every point of criticism that Tulsi brought up in that short period of time. So Kamala Harris was kind of just left flailing. She kind of tried to laugh off Tulsi's attacks. Um, and so you really want to overwhelm your opponent. And this is a strategy that people often denounce. It's it's called gish galloping, where you just kind of throw a bunch of stuff at someone, overwhelm them, make it so they can't, you know, respond. And you kind of, you wound them that way, right? Um, but in this instance, Tulsi Gabbard really centered her focus on one thing, the idiotic, you know, prospect of potentially sending U.S. troops to Mexico to combat gang and drug violence. And we started the war on drugs that led to the violence in Latin America, but that's a different story for a different day. She focused on that, and because she just focused on that one issue, I think it wasn't as powerful as it could have been, because, you know, I've been talking about Pete Buttigieg lately. His record is terrible, right? He has a plethora of scandals in South Bend that she could have also lumped in. She could have threw out, you know, the scandal with him firing the police chief. And th there's basically an endless supply of content for criticizing Pete Buttigieg. Um, but she only focused on the one scandal. And as a result, he was able to respond directly and kind of defend himself. Now, overall, stepping back, I think that it's pretty apparent that Tulsi Gabbard got the better of that exchange between the both of them because once she invoked his name, he kind of got in some shots at her. But I think she did a good job at like spinning it and directing the conversation back on to him. But he wouldn't have been as equipped and prepared to defend himself had she just thrown a number of things at Pete Buttigieg. So she, um, you know, she talked about how that statement really demonstrates how he's inexperienced to lead. And then she went on to talk about her experience and how she serves on, you know, different committees and whatnot. I would have spent that time just still hammering Pete with a judge. Uh, with that being said, we'll, we'll focus on what was said there. So he responded by saying, actually, you took me out of context. That's not necessarily what I said. And then he said, do you seriously think anybody on this stage is for invading Mexico? Now, he tried to play this off as if, you know, she was being hyperbolic and she was misrepresenting what he said. And Tulsi Gabbard asked for a fact check. And I'm going to fact check her now. She is 100% correct. And I'll let you see for yourself. So this is from Brian Anderson of the Sacramento Bee, who writes, South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg said at a Latino forum in Los Angeles on Sunday that he'd be willing to send U.S. troops into Mexico to combat gang and drug violence. There was a scenario where we could have security cooperation, Buttigieg said. Even so, he added the caveat, I'd only order American troops into conflict if American lives were on the line and if it was necessary to meet treaty obligations. His campaign later clarified that Buttigieg would only be open to military use as a last resort in response to Mexican cartel violence or an outside threat that endangers the country's security. So what he tried to do was make it seem as if she was accusing him of wanting to invade Mexico. Now that's preposterous and that's kind of clever on his part, but the facts are the facts. He said what he said. She called him out for it, knocked him for it, and she's right. So fact check, it's 100% true. So what did he try to do? He tried to spin this and make it about her, which is really what you want to do, right? If you're backed into a corner, you deflect, and rather than playing defense, you start playing offense. So he knocked her for, predictably, meeting with Assad. Now, this has been trotted out time and again. Whenever somebody is backed into a corner by Tulsi Gabbard, Kamala Harris was the same way. They bring up Assad. She did this after the debate. I think Tim Ryan, after the debate, when she um, got into a heated back and forth with him in that very first debate, he also knocked her for meeting with Assange, uh, not Assange, Assad. Um, and yeah, it's just at this point in time, it's just tired, right? I think that diplomacy is important, and Pete Buttigieg kind of shed light into his horrible foreign policy when she defended herself. Now, I think that she did a good job at actually spinning this and defending herself and also kind of demonstrating why he's a warmonger. So, you know, she likened her meeting with Assad for, you know, purposes of diplomacy um, to, you know, when JFK met with Khrushchev and Roosevelt met with Stalin. And then what did Pete Buttigieg say? like how Trump met with Kim. 
as if that's a bad thing. I dislike Donald Trump, but what would you prefer people to judge? Because Donald Trump is either hot or cold, right? He's he's at 100% or 0%. Or would we prefer him making this half-assed attempt to, you know, work out some type of peace deal with Kim Jong-un? Look, I've said this before. Donald Trump is in over his head and he doesn't really know what he's doing. Like, he, he doesn't really have any core philosophy when it comes to diplomacy or foreign policy. So he, he doesn't really know what he's doing, right? He is influenced by who strokes his ego the best. He's a child. He's a man baby. So I don't think he's actually going to be capable of achieving some sort of lasting peace. But should we give him credit for at least trying? Yes. Because what Pete Buttigieg is doing is he's doing what Hillary Clinton did to Obama back in 2008 when she criticized Obama for saying he would meet with Iran without preconditions. This is part of diplomacy. And Tulsi Gabbard is right to say that it's it's okay to meet with our adversaries. Now, Tulsi Gabbard is not perfect here because while I do believe that her meeting with Assad for purposes of peace mattered, um, I don't like that she will give our allies a pass. For example, she has a relationship with Modi that makes me feel very uncomfortable because he is a fascist and he is currently escalating tensions with Pakistan by just taking over Kashmir and this could lead to nuclear war, right? These are both nuclear armed countries. So it goes both ways. Like you can't just agree to meet with our adversaries and then continue meeting with our allies and give them a pass. Like I also want you to use your position as commander in chief to put pressure on our allies. So pressure, you know, uh, the leader of the Philippines, for example, Robert Duterte, to stop doing all of these extrajudicial killings of his own people call out Myanmar for their genocide of the Rohingya. Like, use your position of power to actually fight for peace and not give our allies a pass. So, you know, I have my criticisms of Tulsi Gabbard there. With that being said, on the substance of this exchange, um, she was 100% correct. So overall, I think that she definitely got the better of this exchange. Mainstream media is probably not going to see that this way because they love Pete Buttigieg um, and they, they don't like Tulsi Gabbard. So... We'll see how this plays out. We'll see how this affects people to judge in the polls. If I had to predict, this probably won't have the impact that it had, um, you, you know, when Tulsi hit Kamala Harris. But if this just, like, knocks him down a few pegs, in and of itself, that's great. And I am wholly grateful to Tulsi for doing what nobody else really seemed to want to do on the debate stage. Like, you've got to go after the front runner. Um, and Tulsi Gabbard did that. Now, do I wish she'd also direct her, you know, ire at... Biden? Yes, because he also is a regime change candidate, right? He voted for the Iraq war, like the same thing that she criticizes Hillary Clinton for. Um, I mean, <laughs> she doesn't criticize Joe Biden for. So I don't necessarily know the criteria that she uses to evaluate who she's going to attack. You know, there's certainly some type of logic to it, you know, based on coming to the debate and who she's going to target. Maybe just she, she selects targets that she thinks she can pull voters in from. Maybe that's it, but I don't know. But overall, great job to Tulsi here. I think she did a good job in calling out Pete Buttigieg. There's area for improvement, but at the same time, what she did was uh, great. I'll, I'll take what I can get. He needs to be called out, and she did just that.